Water color markers get a bum rap. So I have some watercolor markers. I've only used them a handful of times. I don't think that's a fair shake. I really haven't used them for what they're good for. And there are some real advantages over regular markers. A lot of people say, oh, I'm just gonna use regular markers. But the watercolor markers, they're a good deal. Let's talk about that. And then hang out in the end, we have some viewer art. I gotta show this to you. You know, I'm always encouraging all of you, send in art. There is an email below. Just send the art to the email. Let me know where to find you. We'll put it up on the show. So we're gonna do that today. Okay, now the markers that I usually use are their Winsor & Newton Pro Markers. Now, they're watercolor markers, not the Pro Marker alcohol markers. They have two of them. You wanna make sure you use the watercolor marker if that's what you're looking to use. And the reason that these get a bum wrap is because they are abrasive on a paper that you don't wanna be abrasive on. And if you layer and layer and layer, sometimes that abrasion can just tear up some of the fibers and make it pill because you're really scrubbing on wet paper and it's not a good thing to do. But if you do, like here, you'll see me filling them in and you'll see how much, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it, but you'll see how much I fill in, how much I go over it, and then I add some more to it. So, and it's fine, nothing happened to this paper. This happens to be the Canson Heritage paper, the hot press, but it, any paper, any good quality paper, cotton paper shouldn't deteriorate if under this kind of circumstance if you use them like alcohol markers and you go over and go over and layer and layer yeah you're going to tear up the paper but don't worry about that that's not what i'm doing here i'm just adding some color i'm making sure that i don't scratch the paper up too much and nothing happens everything works out very well now one of the advantages of the watercolor markers, especially these Winsor Newton markers, if you, is it Winsor and Newton? I always say Winsor Newton. It might be Winsor and Newton. Let me look. Yes, it's Winsor and Newton. I'm a moron. So anyway, I'm probably still going to say Winsor Newton on every other video after this one because I'll forget. But you know what I mean. You know the brand. It's a great brand. It's a wonderful brand. And I use them a lot. Well, I don't use them a lot. I use them sometimes, but I use Winsor & Newton stuff for a long time. The Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor was one of the first watercolors that I got, and they were beautiful. I enjoyed using them. They're decent. They really are. For a student grade watercolor, they're right there. They're like just under professional grade. And it, you, anyway, that's it, that's a different video. We're, we're Get back to this video. So... One of the benefits is that there are pigments in the watercolor, so you're getting more light fastness from watercolor markers than you do from even the best dye alcohol color, yeah, alcohol markers. They're not alcohol colored, that would be weird. But they are definitely alcohol markers, and even the best, like the Copics, they're not light fast. They're going to fade, I don't know why you would do that. Why would you give a card to your grandmother that she's gonna put up on the wall, put up on hang on her fridge, and be so proud of it, and then make her think that she's losing her sight? Because in a week, she's gonna be struggling to read the card you just gave her. She's gonna think her eyes are going. Don't ever do that to your grandma. She just wants to make you cookies. So don't do that. Use. The watercolor markers if you're going to make a card for your grandmother. That way she could put it up and enjoy it for a while. She's got to enjoy what she has. The other thing about using the watercolor markers, you can add water. I don't do that at all in this video. I don't use them the way that you're probably supposed to use them. I don't really do that with anything in my life. But if you go ahead and you add a little bit of water, you can get some nice watercolor from it and, you know, water it down a little bit, make it, you layer it a little bit with the with a watercolor brush. If you, you know, scribble it on like a palette or a plate or something, and then you use some water to pick up the color and put it on the book, you can do that too. Or if you want to soften some edges, you can do that too with regular water and a watercolor brush. You can do that a whole lot with an alcohol marker. You can do a little bit as soon as you first put it down and then swipe it across, you can get a little bit, but it's really not gonna be the best. You really could wanna do that with watercolor markers, but it makes them portable. So now you have portable watercolor 
that you isn't dried in a palette somewhere. You just take the color you want and put that on a palette and then you just use the that and then that's it. It's done. You don't have to worry about it drying out or running in your bag or getting dirt in it or having it mold or anything like that. That is a big benefit to these watercolor markers. Now the downside is if you're not using a palette, it is hard to blend these because you're going to have to put a little color down immediately go in with some water. You basically you're doubling up your work. It's better to use regular watercolor paint if you're going to be doing a lot of blending and a lot of mixing of colors but as far as markers go I think I prefer the watercolor markers for another big reason and that is they don't go through the page so any alcohol marker you can have some thick paper and for the most part you will get bleed through it doesn't matter it will go to the other side and unless you use the crescent render book which is basically has plastic in it and that's that's paper sandwiched between I'm sorry it's plastic sandwiched between two pieces of paper and so that makes it so it doesn't go through to the other side but really any other paper you use the alcohol marker is going to go through however with the watercolor marker you can use regular watercolor paper you can layer it thick and I don't mean layer after layer I just mean lay it on thick like I do here full strength and it doesn't go through to the other side there's nothing I can paint on the other side of the paper if I wanted to because it doesn't go through and that's a wonderful aspect of the watercolor markers over the alcohol markers now I know the reason that these are much less popular is because they will tear up the paper that's just an aspect of them that you have to deal with it's a trait of the marker that you have to get around and train yourself not to do that like you would with an alcohol marker which you can layer and layer and just that's fine and nothing happens but with a watercolor marker the more you layer the more you run the risk of damaging the paper and you don't want to do that so I get why people don't use these as much but in my opinion not only are they just as good but they're even better because of all the other reasons that I already gave you that I'm not gonna repeat again like I did the negative so let's move on now on a not so unrelated topic there is an argument that I may not be a real watercolor artist because I don't paint often with a real watercolor brush and the argument is that I don't struggle or wrestle with the water as much as someone else I don't learn how to control the water through a brush and there might be an argument there I just don't care about the argument I'm an artist and that's what I care about however I I do create and it gets done and I'm happy with that that's just how that works and that brings me to the statement don't let elitists get you down desensitize yourself to opinions that don't really matter you know if you create stuff you're an artist like this particular drawing here this I would consider this a watercolor painting I know it's a marker drawing but it's still watercolor I may call it an abstract drawing but a watercolor painting because people get very angry when I do that too I'll call something that's like a line and wash I'll say oh it's an abstract drawing and they say you're using paint just about the whole time except for the very end so so they don't like that I call it a drawing it's really a painting and people are weird they just get hung up on the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life I have a lot of weird hang-ups but calling something a thing like a drawing a painting or something that's just you're splitting hairs now you're just trying to piss people off or you're just you really are that I don't know annoying is that the word you just have to try and correct every little thing that every little one does and you're always looking at it. you are probably offended that someone calls a drawing and a painting or something I don't know but I'm telling you don't let those people get to you you just do what you're gonna do it's like when I do music I know that I'm not a musician well I am because I play a musical instrument but I'm not what people consider a musician I more like I write songs now they don't have to be good they just have to be songs so 
I write songs, but I'm not like into the musician aspect of it. It's I love the music part of it, and really, that's the main focus is the actual music. But it's not. I'm not looking to oh, let's see how many scales I can run or how many notes I can play in 30 seconds. I I don't do that. I just like the song to sound good and have a good melody and go along well, and that's it. It's the same thing with art. My art is it just like to go along with it and get done what I get done and I'll call it whatever I call it because of what I'm using. So if I use watercolor, in this case watercolor markers, I consider that watercolor. It's not a I wouldn't say it's a marker drawing because when I say marker, I think alcohol marker. So this is I would say okay, it's a watercolor drawing. It's a line and wash with watercolor and ink even though it's with marker, watercolor marker and in ink. But people get weird, they get strange, they get hung up on stuff. Don't let that be you. Only you can prevent idiots. So like I've explained before, yes, sometimes, especially in these YouTube videos, I never, almost never use a regular watercolor brush. I use the water brushes. So but that doesn't mean that it's I don't understand the struggle there's a big struggle with water brushes a lot of people struggle with them so it's just learning what you're using learning how to use it to your advantage and get the job done that's really all there is to it now if you remember from the my favorite art supplies video I got hung up on the duck thing so I decided I'm gonna draw a duck here so that's what I did and I was trying to make amends with the ducks that I was drawing and painting on even though I learned that it wasn't actually ducks and that helped to save my ego a little bit but I don't know I just don't like the word I don't like that they did that okay so this first viewer art is sent in by Anna and well Anna down in the comments and that's how you'll know her and so here's something that I appreciate with this first of all I have to say that the I'm not I've never usually been a big fan of the toned paper. I don't know if this is toned or it's just how it is in the in the page and how it came off in the picture, but uh, that color is not is not bad. It's it's a decent color. I don't know what that is, but anyway, this is from a Christmas card that she did, and she did that kind of grassai method where you I, I think that's how it's pronounced. That's how I pronounce it. If I'm wrong, you tell me. Then that, that's not how I'm supposed to pronounce it. And I might do that and change it, or I might just keep going. But anyway, it, something that a lot of people don't do is pencil with watercolor. Most people do pen and watercolor. But the pencil with the watercolor comes off much softer. And it's kind of like a gentle blend. And you actually look at it. It's See, this is the thing. It tricks you into staring at it to make out what it really is. So you look deeper into it to try and figure out, okay, what is, oh, I get it. That's what this is. This is the picture here. And so, and I've done a couple of pencil with watercolor abstracts things and I enjoy them. I'm probably going to do more. Um, I do like the stark contrast of the ink, but every once in a while, this just strikes me and I like the pencil with the watercolor. Great job, Anna. Okay, now this one is from Stacy, and here's the interesting thing about this. This definitely looks like something that I would draw. The little patterns, different changing shapes, I love it. Uh, here's the thing that's interesting to me. Because of the watercolor bleed all over the page, I can't tell whether the ink was put down first or whether the color was put down first and then the ink was added to the color in places that interested her. But I will say that either way, I really like this. I do enjoy the extra watercolor behind. It almost makes it look like a sea scene, like in the ocean somewhere or something like that. But I do like the watercolor bleed all over. And the colors are great. They work together. And I just love the way that it flows. I think the flow of the, which way the pen goes versus which way the watercolor in the background that has no detail goes. I think it works very well. So great job, Stacy. Okay, so if you're looking to find these two ladies, um, Anna, it does not have her own site that she puts stuff up on. And as soon as she does get that, we're gonna put a link to, a, to anywhere in that video 
somewhere as soon as she lets me know hey I'm up on Instagram or wherever she is Facebook anywhere else we're gonna put that link there but right now her stuff is only up on someone else's site and I want to highlight her and not someone else second for Stacy now her stuff is over in so you go to the Brooklyn Art Library sketchbook project website and the name of the book is abstract dreams it's the call number is S290768 and that's where you can find some of her art but if she gets an Instagram or a Facebook or anything else uh, I will go ahead and link that in whatever video whenever she gets it she lets me know I'll put it in there so thank you to both of you for turning in some art I would really love to see some more art from all of you just go ahead and email it to me I'd love to put it up here and see what it is and let's share it with everybody else and I'm gonna be doing a video about that soon you'll see so okay so thumbs up the video if you understand the difference between a Sharpie marker and a Copic marker and a Windsor and Newton marker and how they're all different and how you're supposed to use them and how you're supposed to draw with them and then you completely ignore that and you do whatever the hell you want because you're an artist and that's what you do. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.